Hello, how are you doing? I hope you're having an amazing day and welcome back to another video. This, um, this is the new DJI Neo and believe it or not, this is all you're going to need to carry this tiny drone and fly it just about anywhere. And I am being real about this bag. The DJI Neo came with me inside my backpack on six different flights to California, Denver, Houston, and other destinations and I took it with me on three different hikes inside a bag like this. The build quality is very good, the hard plastic feels very similar to the one that my DJI Mini 4 Pro has, and after taking it everywhere and using it for many days, it doesn't have a single scratch. So my opinion might be different from other content creators, but I believe that the DJI Neo is amazing for beginners and people who want to try this as a hobby without spending a big amount of money. In the US, you don't need a registration with the FAA because it has a low weight of 135 grams and I believe that this is very similar in many countries. And this has been designed to be easy to use by almost anyone without the need of having previous experience. And learning to use this is extremely easy compared to other drones that we have in the market, even those that have been made by DJI. The basic idea is that you're not going to need any kind of controller, but as you learn more about this hobby, you're going to be able to use this drone with your smartphone or one of these controllers that will unlock a higher flying distance and different options. And for people that want to learn more about FPV drones, you can use it with the DJI Gagos along with a special controller for FPV. Anyway, this is the easy way to use this drone. You only have to turn it on with this button and then select the flight mode that you want using this other one. A voice prompt will confirm the selection and there is also this icon that indicates the current mode. Next, you place the DJI Neo in your hand with the camera facing you and then all you have to do is press and hold the mode button and it will take off in a few seconds. The DJI Neo is going to get in position to perform the flight mode that you chose. It will start tracking you and start recording automatically. There are five modes that you can select. Follow mode, orbit, rocket, spotlight, and drone. And there is a custom mode that right now has three additional modes, which are helix, boomerang, and directional track. Orbit shots will make the DJI Neo perform a full circle around you using different preset values. Drone will send the Neo flying backwards and then back to you, creating a nice zoom in and out effect. The spotlight will get the Neo up and stay in the same position, but it will move in such a way that it will keep tracking you without moving away from its current position. So it's more about the camera moving up or down and the Neo making a rotation left or right. Using rocket will make the drone fly upward with the camera facing downwards. And I think that the most popular mode and maybe my personal favorite is the follow mode. As the name implies, the Neo will follow you and you can customize the view or angle to low, mid or high where each of these is going to give you a different perspective. And then you can select the distance that you want between you and the drone. It's very important to point out that this drone doesn't have obstacle avoidance sensors, so you need to be mindful of your surroundings. And I have to confess that in the beginning, I was very afraid that it was about to crash against something. So my initial tests were very shy and easy on the Neo, but then I felt more confident that it was time to push the limits even more. And in this example, I did a sharp turn when I was running and the Neo did an amazing job catching up. And this might look like a simple task, but when I tried doing the same with the Hover X1, it almost went missing in action on the river. Of course, I did more tests with the tracking, nothing crazy honestly, and this drone was doing a very good job following me even when I was walking or running between different obstacles. But of course, this is not going to keep tracking you in a tight space where it's going to lose contact with you. The 
the other mode that is very similar is the directional track mode but here the Neo will try to go backwards in front of you. Something that I did notice was the effort made by this little guy trying to catch up and stay in track by going around if I change my direction. But I think that sometimes it was getting confused and instead of getting in front of me, it would start to follow me from behind. And obviously that was not the intention. Using the DJI Fly app on your smartphone will let you change the settings for each of these modes. And in most cases, you're going to be able to change the distance between you and the drone and also change the angle or height that you want the Neo to fly and record from. For example, you can select a flat or high angle when you select the follow mode. You can start each of these modes inside the app and also stop any movement if you see that it's going to crash against something. You can also control the drone manually with these joysticks on the screen. And according to DJI, the maximum flying distance will increase to about 50 meters. But I get the feeling that it's actually less than that and here goes something that not everyone is talking about. There is a big chance that the Neo will lose the connection with your smartphone. And when that happens, it will just hover in the same place, which is good because it's not going to fly away. But at the same time, it's not going to come back to you either. And at some point, if you can reconnect, it will land when the battery is low. And this can be risky if you lose the connection when you're flying over water, a building, or a big tree. It did happen to me once. Very scary situation, by the way. But I was able to walk closer to the drone, but then the app crashed and it took over a minute to reconnect. And that can be enough to get anyone to panic. But even with this limitation on the distance, I feel that the app is very useful. You can see a live view of the drone, you can change the angle of the camera, and you can record your voice directly into the app. The motors are not going to be heard, but you can tell that there is a heavy noise reduction which can make the audio sound a bit weird sometimes. And when you transfer the files from the Neo to your computer, sometimes the audio is going to be inside the video and sometimes it's not. You are going to get a separate audio file, but it gets annoying because now you have to put it together and synchronize it and, you know, it's, uh, uh, yeah. All right. And it's having trouble coming back, but we'll see how the footage looks like. Mm, time to land. Anyway, the mic feature is, is something nice to have, but I would not recommend to use it if you're serious about vlogging. Using a regular controller like this one might be the best option because it will allow you to fly further away and faster if that's what you're looking for. And the good thing here is that even if you lose the signal, the Neo does have a return to home command and a few other options that you're not going to get by just using your smartphone. So the camera on this drone has a maximum resolution of 4K and you can record using 30 frames per second. The bitrate is supposed to be 75 megabits per second, but in most cases, my videos are getting 50 and in some rare cases, it can get somewhere close to 60 megabits per second. If you want to record using 50 or 60 frames per second, it can only be done in 1080p where the bitrate caps at around 35 megabits per second. I like that we get the option to record using H.265 or H.264, but the camera does have a small sensor, so dynamic range is going to be on the lower side and in low light situations is not going to be great. I was already expecting this because of the low price that this device has, but honestly, the videos that you can record with the Neo are going to be quite good for social media. Unlike other drones made by DJI, the Neo doesn't have a 3-axis gimbal, but it does have an electronic stabilization that will make your videos more stable and it will also help to keep the horizon straight. Most of the time, it will do a fantastic job, but this is not going to be better than having a gimbal with 3-axis. If it's windy outside, you're going to notice that the stabilization is going to be affected and there is not much that can be done about it, but if this is something that bothers you too much, I guess you could apply some stabilization in post. The battery is supposed to last for 18 minutes, but after testing this a few times, I was only able to get about 15 minutes of flight time and recording. I would say that it's not the best, but it's not that bad either. 
but you have to pay attention to the battery level because once it gets low, it's going to make the NEO land at its current location. You can charge the battery directly on the drone with a USB-C cable, or you can get this charging hub that can charge three batteries at the same time. It has a light indicator for each slot, and this hub can be used as a power bank to charge other devices. And look at this size. It goes along with the compact design of the DJI NEO, don't you think? You can buy extra batteries for about $40 and I think that having three can be enough for most people. And if you feel that way, I do recommend to get the combo that comes with the charging hub and three batteries instead of buying the drone by itself. It's a bit more expensive, but one battery is never enough. Think of this as having quality time with the Neo. This drone doesn't have a memory card slot, so you're not going to be able to use a micro SD card. It does have an internal memory of 22 gigabytes to store all of your videos or pictures. 22 gigabytes should be able to hold about 45 minutes of videos shot at 4K. I know you're thinking that 45 minutes is not a lot and I have to agree. So moving those files out of the Neo will have to be done more frequently. But the good news is that doing so to your smartphone is very easy using the DJI Fly app or you can connect the DJI Neo directly to your computer to transfer your videos as well. I only have one question for DJI. Is it too difficult to have a memory slot? Let me know what you think of this in the comments down below. This is not the first time that we have a compact drone like this in the market. The Hover X1 was attracting a good amount of customers, but having a price tag over $400 shooting at only 2.7K made it hard to recommend when we had solid options from DJI at the lower price. So now DJI is getting all the attention with this drone, not only because of the features that it has, but it also happens to have a very low price of $200 for the basic version. $200. Or you can buy the combo with the charging hub and extra batteries for $290. You're going to get a drone that has a very low profile which doesn't seem to attract a lot of attention. And I've seen how people look at this and, and, and they see this as a toy. It's a complete different reaction compared to when I use anything bigger than my Mini 4 Pro. Like I said, if you want super high quality videos, this is not going to be for you. But it's good enough for social media and it's a fun way to get into this hobby. Just make sure that you're going to fly in a safe way. If you want to check out the different options to buy this drone, the links are going to be down below. Please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel. I really hope that you're having an amazing day and I hope to see you all in the next video. Bye.